Hello. I'm back. It's the second episode of Starpoint. I'm glad you're tuning in. Uh, this is a podcast about Go for Go fans who are not currently in front of a board. Or maybe you are at a board, you're studying a pro game or something like that, and you just want to have something in the background. In any case, I'm not going to be showing you any variations, so you can just relax and listen and just think about Go-related stuff without actually um, playing. So this week, I wanted to talk about this, the topic of style, um, because I just saw um, a lecture by In Song Huang from Yonggu Seng Dojang. He's, uh, he runs like a uh, Insei style academy uh, in Europe, uh, and then he also has like an American version of it. Um, but he has an upload. He has an, uh, a lecture uploaded about style, and I've seen this lecture, a version of it before. But he generally just kind of goes over um, like seven archetypes of Go players that um, he has found in his years of teaching, and emphasizes that when we're stuck in one style, and we and we've like become the best at that style as we could possibly be. It's time to change your style so you can learn something new. And it's really hard to do that. But the, essentially, the seven styles are the philosopher, the honor student, the politician, the boss, the detective, the street fighter, and Don Quixote. Um, to go over them briefly, the, the philosopher uh, kind of has a very cerebral understanding of the game, has big strategic ideas. And then they maybe just make like a, they miss like a double Atari or something. They have low technical ability. Oh yeah. So the first three, um, stop the first three archetypes that I've listed, they're more of like the strategic cerebral styles. And then the second three are the, um, so the, the first three being the philosopher, the honor student, and the politician. And then the third, uh, the second three, the boss detective and street fighter. Those are the technical types and Don Quixote is in a category on his own. The honor student is um, someone who sticks to principles and abides by um, you know, what you're supposed to do, like proper moves, uh, but doesn't have as much practical knowledge. And if the situation is different from what they learned, they may not know how to handle it. And then the politician is someone who likes to make a lot of deals. They trade off. They, they kind of look for uh, ways to escape um, the question that their opponent is asking, like a politician. Okay, on to the technical styles. Um, the boss, I believe this one, I mean, you should go out and check out his lecture. It's up on YouTube. Um, so, I mean, I'm just going to try to explain as best I can as to um, how I understand it. But the boss, basically, I think they, um, they kind of push around their opponent. They try to look for all the sente and poke at them and try to make them do things. And they don't really deal with their own weaknesses. They don't really... Um, um, have like a larger strategy in mind. Um, and then the detective who always looks for, like they love Aji. They like to stare at a local position and uh, just kind of see if there's some kind of Tasuji in there that will change the whole game and wipe it out. And they may, may get too focused on that local position and they may lose sight of like what the bigger strategy is. And then you've got the street fighter who just has no principal understanding. They don't play proper moves. They just cut, 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 and then they just fight, 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 try to kill. And but they have very good technical ability because they have to to be the strength you are. You, you know, at that without having proper like go play, you have to have good technical ability to make up for it, right? And then Don Quixote, I believe he's just like a kind of like um has no sense of direction and uh, just doesn't even have a good sense of motivation as to why they're playing go i don't really know what this category is basically just kind of like there's no category for this person who who doesn't really seem to um stick to a like a like a particular mo so with that being said um and and he uh in song did say you sh you can't type yourself because he he's had students try to type themselves and then he's found that they're always wrong 
but I mean, this is the best I got here. I personally feel like I'm a detective. Um, I get caught up into Suji. You know, when I first started, um, or like when I was kind of maybe DDK level, I never thought I'd be a technical player. I thought like I was bad at reading and I didn't like reading. It's so confusing. I'd rather just kind of, I was more like a philosopher type or that's, or, or honor student type. That's what I thought I was. But the more I played, like, um, especially um, all the games I've played on Fox, the more I feel like it's in my advantage when the situation is a little more complicated and there's a fight and there's tension. I hate when there's no tension um, because it means that there's nothing really going on on the board and I have to have a better, like, territorial intuition, which I don't have. Um, I'm not very good at, like, finding, like, how to make the big points. But I feel like I have a lot of fun looking for these kind of small moves that'll turn the tides of the game and i stare too long at like a local position looking for a tsuji when there is none um but yeah those are the those are the uh styles that he's listed um and the reason i bring these types up because it kind of goes along like it goes hand in hand with uh the games i've been playing recently a couple of the games that i've been playing recently um and uh, I don't know if you remember, but last time I said I was kind of on a hiatus from from playing Go, I'm kind of back. Like, I've been playing, like, I think I inspired myself with saying that to play more. And so this past week, I've been playing more. And so if you don't, if you haven't played on Fox, I mean, Fox is a Chinese server. And so depending on what time of day you play at, uh, mostly you're going to get um, Chinese players. Or that's what I get at my level, at least at um, 1Q. So I was playing um, some Fox games, and then one day I took, um, I, I decided to play a game a little earlier in the day. I usually play like maybe around like 11 p.m. ish, so it's, you know, uh, China is like woken up and they're ready to play Go. Uh, but then I played um, like at 6 or 7 in the evening one day, and I got matched with a Canadian player. You can see their flags, right? So I was like, oh, cool, it's a, it's a Canadian player. And the um, contrast of style between the Chinese players that I usually play and this Canadian player was so stark. It was like night and day. And because, okay, here's what happens. Like one of the games I played against the Chinese player, um, I approach a 4-4. He kicks me. I stand, right? So what's the next move in this Joseki? It, you back off, right? But this play, person doesn't back off and they just descend to the second line. So I'm just kind of like, okay. Uh, I considered like attaching or approaching from the other side and kind of having like this double approach formation, but I figured, you know what? I'm just going to complete the Joseki as normal. And then if they take the base and they back off, then it's, look, I have Sente for whatever descent, the value that they got for that descent, which is what happened. Um, so things like that happen in um, in a lot of Fox games. Like people don't follow Joseki. They, they play kind of like very um, gnarly looking moves. But I play this Canadian guy and he's we're playing Joseki like super normal. Everything's balanced at the beginning of the game. And it's just, it's almost boring to me. I know that I shouldn't say that because I'm the one who's playing proper as well but i like it when it's a little messy you know um but when i find someone else like it's like I, I expect my opponent to make the mess for me so when i find someone who doesn't make messes then it's like i kind of don't like the direction of the game um being a detective right i mean well a self-prescribed detective but this person just played like a um, super normal opening but then when we got to the fighting part, which is like the opposite of um, the Chinese players, um, th they lacked some fundamental Tsuji knowledge, right? Um, I, f I forget which game it was, but I think it was just like, oh, I, I extended out a stone and I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, they're going to nose, nose Tsuji that stone and capture it. So I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll deal with that, that. And I was kind of um, deal creating like a... Um, a plan in my head assuming 
that they're going to capture these stones and they didn't see it they didn't know how to capture them they didn't play the nose to suji and i'm like oh this is that's really strange like i'm used to people knowing that at this level and um on the other side there's so many games i've played on fox against chinese players where i feel like i've got this decided advantage in the beginning because they're playing all this crazy stuff that doesn't make any sense they're not taking bases they're leaving weak groups everywhere left and right and what do you know they they beat me with this like crazy reading skill and they they just kind of like i'm just kind of like flabbergasted like i was so ahead like i thought i was so ahead i had the objective advantage in this game but somehow they were able to turn the tables and find this like crazy cut here and there and win this capturing waste by liberty something like that right so if i were to characterize like and stereotype the players with these like uh styles from um in song wang's uh young uh dojang's like um uh founder I would call the uh, Chinese players on Fox as street fighters and Western players in general as honor students. Like I feel like a lot of the Western players are honor students. They're, they're learning from videos and books and they don't really, they didn't like grow up playing with their buddies, you know, uh, with like go as like a very predominant part of the culture. Um, and, it was transmitted primarily through external sources. And so I feel like that's probably why the Eastern and Western styles are so different. And you've seen, I've seen other people comment on this as well. If you watch the surrounding game, um, there's a comment made saying that the Western style is very slow and the Korean style is very aggressive, right? Um, and I think there's definitely a lot of truth to that. Of course, you're going to find examples of, uh, of that not being the case, but, um, yeah, uh, I just thought that was interesting. Um, on another note, I would also ask like, where does style come from? Like, is it something you craft on your own? I actually don't think so. I think that style is emergent, um, I don't think that someone goes out and says like, oh, I like Yi Chang Ho's like stone Buddha style. That's the kind of go I'm going to play. I'm sure you've, maybe someone's tried that, but there's something inherent and in about like the, like the way you perceive the game that's unique to you that other people don't really see as like it that way. It's hard for you to lean into that and just kind of define yourself. It more just kind of comes out, right? As soon as you start playing the game, I feel like there's a certain disposition to a certain style. Mm. I have a couple of friends um, that are stronger than me. And I've always like talked about their styles because it's so different playing them when they were beating me. I, I, I used to play like, I used to play them more often when I was a, uh, weaker but they would beat me in very different ways um one friend i would describe them as someone who gives you everything they want every everything you ask for and then you end up losing the game i would go into this area and that area and he would just back off he would just say welcome okay yeah take it do do that and i'll go over here you know oh and then it's like okay i'm gonna go here it's like oh i'm sorry to 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 be in your space here let me just kind of scoot over here and you know let you do your thing and you can go ahead right and he would just it would just be very nice and peaceful and calm and then at the end of the game you're out of the points and you're like wait how did i lose (laughs) and you're just kind of like what what just happened whereas my other friend he would beat me by just like stabbing me like 50 times as soon as I met him. Like, he's like, hey, how are you doing? And he stabs me like 30 times. And I'm like, okay, I, I lose, right? Before we even get to the middle game. It's like, he just kind of outreads me, cuts me, very aggressive. And that just may have been my um, perception as a DDK. Maybe if I played them now, it would be 
I would have a different opinion about the styles that they have. But that's how it felt from back then, at least. Um, so just a little personal update um, as to how my Go has been doing. Um, like I said, I'm back. Um, and I've been playing four fours. Um, it's so hard for me to tell like how those first opening moves affect the kind of game like that's going to come out. But I'm just thinking like, okay, if I like a style, if I have a style where I, um, like fights and I like tension, uh, then I should probably play less territorial and more influential, right? So I'm thinking like, hey, let's just try this 4-4 thing and and let's try like playing it consistently so I can see a pattern of what kind of games I get out of it. And so that's, um, that's what I've been trying lately. So I've been liking it so far. Um, I feel like the games have mostly been pretty good, like in terms of like the kind of game that I want out of playing these games. Um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll play four fours for a while, see how it goes. I mean, maybe it's going to be my thing and I'll just keep playing four fours. Um, I can't think of the only pro I can think of that is consistently plays four fours is, um, Takemiya, which I believe he, he usually almost always plays four fours or unless that was just a part, a certain era. But, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just like, I should try to play more like to my style. Um, I was in the uh, I was in a Barnes and Noble the other day, and of course they don't have. You know what's cool though? They have Go at Barnes and Noble. They like they have like the like a Go board set, like a Go set at Barnes and Noble, and it's like it just says Go. It's like this big. It looks like it's like a pretty fancy box. Um, and it just says go in the middle. And this company also sells like chess sets and such. Um, and I always like go there and move the chess stuff like away so that that board is visible, um, so that people can see it. (laughs) Um, it's, um, but obviously no books on go at Barnes and Noble. There's like a tiny little shelf of chess stuff. And I was, you know, I'm I'm also a chess fan, not as much of a chess fan as I am a Go fan, um, but they do relate to each other in a lot of ways. So I, I go to the chess section, I, I look up some of the, there's a, look through some of the books there, and there's one about um, kind of improving your mentality of chess. And one of the comments that I read in that book was to play to your strengths, which is, counterintuitive to what I would have thought right because you know I'm thinking like oh I I am good at opening theory and Joseki right and I'm terrible at Tesuji and reading so it's like okay well you should study up on Tesuji and reading right so you can balance it out Um, and not that you shouldn't but it is a new approach to say Look, maybe your Tesuji and reading do need some work, but you're predisposed in a way. And obviously this doesn't apply to like very low level players because you're just starting out, right? And you're going to be bad at everything. I mean, I'm bad at everything. But at a certain point, you're going to discover you're predisposed to be better at certain things than others. And the book is kind of saying like, look, no matter how hard you try, you're going to be the best at your strengths and your weaknesses. Like they're not going to be as good, right? So one thing you should try to do is emphasize your strengths and really amp up the strengths that you have. Cause imagine like you're good at reading, but you suck at like opening moves. It's like, and you spend all this time and energy studying Fuseki and it's just not clicking. Um, and you're at your rank because you are, you have a good reading ability. Whereas like if you spent all that time honing in your reading, did some other supplementary uh, opening study, maybe your reading would like double, triple, right? In that time. 
and you would get even higher. So I guess like you have to use your time efficiently in whatever way you use it. Um, and that's, you know, all of this talk about your strengths and weaknesses. Everyone knows like Go is a game with so many different elements to it. Like you have to be good at so many different things. There's opening stuff, there's reading, there's Joseki, there's territory, um, there's counting, there's end game, um, things like that. There's like so many little things to be good at and you can't be good. At, you can't be the best at all of them. And this is also why it's so hard to judge skill, right? Because you look at two 8Q players, one of them is going to have a 5Q reading ability and a 12Q Joseki knowledge. Another one's going to have like really good like overall level of skills and they have terrible time management skills and they lose games that way a lot and so like especially at the lower levels everything's gonna be like so crazy like so i would say like it's it's um i mean it's expected that you don't always win against people you expect to win against right because it's sometimes it's a rock paper scissors situation um to go over some of the games, uh, I had some really bad losses early on in the week. Um, really bad meaning like not in the sense that I lost by a lot, but in the sense that they were so preventable, which is like the worst. Um, one of them was like, I was so ahead and comfortable for the whole game. And then one of my groups, I had this like gut feeling that there's something maybe wrong with it. And they turned it into a Seki. They just make this empty triangle and all of a sudden I can't Atari their group and it's just a Seki and the whole group has no points anymore and I lose just barely like it was like um it was like a such a huge part of the board meaning I was so ahead and that Seki just made it made them edge over the win and I was just like ah uh, and then another loss that I had that was like really memorable was um, a capturing race loss and you know I've been playing like five minute plus 30 second Byoyomi games so capturing races are pretty intense and hard um, but one thing that I really did wrong was you know in capturing races you fill outside liberties first and then inside liberties right but for some reason I didn't consider now this this is a part of the show where it's hard to actually explain <laughs> without a board but essentially, there was an inside, um, there was like a, a, a group that my opponent could Atari from the inside, and I decided to fill in that group instead of just filling out an outside liberty and letting them Atari that to fill in their own. Um, just that one move, just kind of, oh my goodness. I had some good wins, though. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to climb back up into one Don uh, on Fox. Um, I feel like... I definitely feel a lot of pressure relieved after demoting. There's mistakes being made at this level that I don't think I would have encountered at the one Don level. Um, and I think one Don is also kind of like a strange territory because I have a feeling that that's a popular rank for people to set themselves as when they start the game because you can set your own rank when you start and then it takes a few games to balance out your, your rank and get to the level you're supposed to be. Um, but yeah, that's the, you know, that's how it goes. I, I'm going to keep trying to play more games, um, and study more. I, I'm just, I'm spending a lot of time, um, doing like life and death. I actually really enjoy life and death problems. Um, it's just, it's actually so interesting to me when I find like the, the solution, um, sometimes I'm just even curious, like, Hey, like this doesn't make sense to me. I don't think this works. What is the answer? And then I, I would look it up and I'd be like, Oh, that's, I didn't think of that, about that. Um, it's just, it's almost like reading a novel. Like when I play out, um, a Sumego, it's just inherently interesting, which is, I think it's a good sign. And, but I think you need to build up some, uh, go literacy before you can appreciate that. So um, I'm gonna keep at it. I'm gonna keep uh, playing these, playing those games, and doing those problems, and um, see where it takes me. But I guess that's gonna be it for now. Um, thanks for joining me for this uh, episode of Starpoint. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. 
Uh, keep playing Go. See ya. Thank you.